you get a season one of a show and it's exciting and everything, but what does season two feel like? Season two feels like, did we really just do that? Like we really did a whole freshman season of a brand new series and they let us have a sophomore series. It's like, a, you know, a little bit of an exhale because it also comes with, all right, now we really have to bring it. But it's, I have to say, honestly, it feels good. It feels like, wow, we really did something that means something. And people liked it. So, I mean, people like it enough and like you enough and trust you enough in this real estate, you know, industry. So how did you first get into that? That's a great question. I've been a real estate broker almost 20 years and I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. Found myself with three little girls, you know, and no child support, single mom. And I thought I was going to die in LA as a single mom. <laughs> it was a little bit different, you know, than how I grew up. So I found Nashville and you know, someone said, you'd be a good realtor. I didn't even know what that really meant. I didn't even know what they did. And I was like, well, let me look into it because I need a job. And I didn't really want your, you know, traditional nine to five because of the three kids. I was like, gosh, if I go work just a nine to five, I'm going to be working for their daycare. You know, so I have to find a way to make more money. And I did. So I looked into real estate, became a realtor. And here we are, you know, in the second season of Fix My Flip using the the skills that I've, you know, garnered the last 20 years. This is something that a lot of people are doing on their own. So John and Jim going together to flip a house. <laughs> what is the worst you've seen so far? The Oh, whoa. The worst I've seen with flippers is, ugh. the worst I've seen is that flippers come into this business thinking that it's a hustle, thinking that it's quick, easy money. So they don't have a plan. They're running it as a hustle instead of as a business. And they don't know the neighborhood. They don't know the criteria for flipping a house in the neighborhood. They don't pad their budgets. I mean, I literally, Kayla, can go on for 20 minutes about what flippers don't do and don't do that are both bad. And it doesn't end. But most of it is that they don't have a mentor. I mean, they just jump in thinking, oh, it's quick, easy money. Let's do it. Because I watched a TikToker who's an influencer and they showed me how to flip a house. I'm like, you guys don't go to Google anymore. You just go to TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, <laughs> so, you know, I see many, many mistakes. Mm. So now I have to ask from this point of view too, if I'm trying to buy a house and I might have come into contact with a bad flipper or I'm trying to flip a house and I have no clue, why do I need you? You tell me right now why we need to call you immediately. Well, you might need me so that you don't lose your life savings and lose a lot of money because you don't know what you're doing. You might need me to find out that flipping may not be for you. You know, it's not for the faint of heart, you know, and just because everybody can flip doesn't mean they should flip. Like even in your business, you know, not everybody should be an interviewer because not everybody's a great interviewer. You have great questions. You're very connecting. So you're in your lane, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. And they call me in and I sit back. I know immediately why I'm there when I walk in. Immediately. They don't have to say two words to me. And I know why I'm there. And after they say two words to me, I know if they should continue flipping or not. 